All right, dermatologic diseases in chapter 22. Again, I don't own this material under fair use. I'm providing lecture content for only my nursing students using this material. And all content within is for only educational purposes with nursing students and does not provide medical advice. So what are we going to learn in this chapter? We're going to identify causes and precipitating factors of skin diseases and skin injuries seen in children and adolescents. Outline the critical components of a skin assessment for children and adolescents. Clinical presentation of acquired skin diseases, skin infections, infestations, and injuries to the skin. Diagnostic laboratory studies that would be used for skin conditions. And then emergency care given for infections, bites, burns to the skin. And then describe the care of the child or adolescent with an acute or chronic skin condition with an injury to the skin. Home base plan, because these kids aren't going to stay in the hospital for this. They're going to have to do this at home, provided oversight by the parent. Alternative therapies and a teaching plan for caregivers as well. So when we talk about skin, go back to A&P, look at the anatomy and the physiology of that skin tissue. So the skin is the largest organ of the body for temperature regulation barrier to the environment, prevention of blood loss, body fluid loss, um, vitamin D production, toxic excretion, and a sense of touch. So remember the epidermis, the dermis as a sub Q, just like the apple, when you have a skin assessment on a child, it's basically the same thing as an adult, but we use the Braden Q score. So the Braden Q score gives us a few different things than the Braden score, including tissue perfusion and oxygenation. So you're going to see that in figure 22.1, the Braden Q score is going to give you a few more points in kids. So consider mobility. If they're completely bedridden in the PICU, that's a problem. Activity, are they bed fast in the PICU? That's a problem. Sensory perception, can they feel that there's something wrong? So think about your developmentally delayed children as well. They're gonna be at risk. Moisture. Are they constantly moist, very moist, occasionally moist? Think about kids. This is a problem when they're wearing a diaper. We gotta be in there changing that diaper frequently. You don't want them staying in a wet environment that's gonna macerate the skin on the bottom, causing breakdown. Friction and shear, just like the adult. You don't want the head of the bed over 30 to 45 degrees because their butt cheeks are gonna be squinching down into the bottom of the bed. Think about, too, um, how many layers are underneath them. With a child, you automatically have a diaper level with the babies, right? So you already have another level. Anytime you have more than three layers underneath the child, they are at risk. So just consider bottom sheet, absorbent pad, gown, diaper, that's already four. Okay, keep the gown open in the back. They're not going to let you, right? Think about pajama bottoms. If we allow them to wear the pajamas, we're adding an extra layer. Every time you add an extra layer, you're adding extra friction. Nutrition, um, again, with kids, that's kind of a double-edged sword, if you can get them to eat or not. Are they NPO? Are they being offered protein shakes? Otherwise, we're doing skin breakdown. Tissue perfusion and oxygenation is your MAP. So your MAP needs to be over 50, less than 50, or uh, 40 in a newborn. Or the patient does not physiologically tolerate position changes. So this might be true in a head injury patient, something like that. Okay. So skin integrity in the hospital, really, really minimizing um, 
wetness. And that can be hard with a baby. So change diapers and frequently change linens to keep the skin dry. Use barrier creams, water-based hypoallergenic moisturizers. Um, bathe the child. Avoid vigorous creaming or scrubbing. Pay special attention to skin around ostomies and tracheostomies. Keep the skin dry and intact. Foam dressings might provide um, a little more help with exudate. Keep them well oxygenated and well nourished. If they are confined, turn in position every two hours. Elevate the bed no more than 30 degrees. Lower the bed, the head of the bed before um, resurfacing. Use a uh, egg crate mattress, foam dressings, minimize tape and gauze. Use skin prep. Monitor all probes tubes, IV catheters for breakdown. Change pulse ox probes every two to six hours. So basically in the hospital that I worked at, it was every two hours when you went in to do vitals, you had to change. When you went in to turn and position the child, you had to change. So left foot, right foot, left arm, right arm kind of thing. Keep moving it around. Think about those pressure injuries when you, uh, especially when there are uh, immobile um, things affecting circulation. Critically ill, they're not going to be moving if they're ventilated. Poor sensory perception, immobility, poor nutrition. So again, just like an adult with the apple core model. Um, level one is the skin of the apple, two is into the white of the apple, three is down to but not including the core of the apple, and four is down to the core. Monitor wound closely for healing. Call the provider if any signs of infection or necrosis. Continue medications and dressings. Keep the area clean and dry. And if still immobile, make sure that you use a pressure relieving um, for breakdown of skin. Remember when you th talk about dermatitis, it's usually going to be diaper rash that we're talking about. So this poor little thing. He needs some zinc oxide. He potentially might need some nice statin as well. This might be yeast-based. Hydrocortisone cream, um, just be careful with that because it can um, cause the skin to get thin. And then signs of bacterial infection like pustules, purulent discharge, increased ulcerations, erythemia, those kind of things we might end up having to um, use some other things as well. But for the most part, zinc oxide, desidim, nystatin will help you. Most of the time, it's in the butt cheek area where most of the moisture is stuck. Candidus has a beefy red appearance, like in this picture. So it's a typical thing, especially when they are teething. Don't use baby powder or cornstarch because it gets in the baby's lungs. It's a great medium for growth of microorganisms and it increases pressure to the area by clumping. So zinc oxide is your big thing. Don't use plastic diaper covers. Holds in moisture and heat. Um, leave the diaper open to air as possible. 15 minutes, four times a day is recommended. Be careful about wipes. Um, wipes can actually be a problem. There are some um, kids that are sensitive to the chemicals in the wipes. So if you're having trouble because you just changed wipes, maybe that might be the concern. Cradle cap, um, that's this word right here. So sibherotic, if you think about that, that's waxy. So if it's a waxy thing, <laughs> it could be um, on the face, behind the ears. It is not pussy. It's not pyretic, and it um, helps distinguish it from a topic dermatitis. 
So most of the time it's from a candida. Um, daily shampoos with pH balanced um, shampoo. Vigorous scrubbing of the scalp should be avoided. And there are shampoos and topical steroids that could be used if really, really bad. Um, some people say warm olive oil or baby oil. Wait 15 minutes, shampoo the hair and brush gently. So the olive oil going in and helping that out. Contact dermatitis is by an irritant or an allergy. Allergic contact um, dermatitis is characterized by pruritus, that is severe, erythemia, pustules, vesicles, streaks, patches, and common causes of um, contact dermatitis, poison oak, poison ivy, poison sumac, but also nickel, so nickel-free jewelry, so sometimes you'll see that on earlobes, wash with soap and water. Um, remove the resin oils from poison oak, poison ivy. We might use Burroughs solution or Dumburo solution as a wet compress. Calmaline lotion, over the counter 1% hydrocortisone. And bathe in oatmeal baths. Okay, this one, eczema, so you can see dry, scaly patches. So eczema um, could be latex, could be poison oak, poison ivy, poison sumac as well. So clinically, these guys present with a history of asthma, allergies, um, skin scaling, intense itching. Patches with erythemia, pustules, crusting, weeping. Infantile um, are usually in the face and the scalp. Childhood, usually the wrists, the neck, behind the ears, and sometimes the hands. And in adolescence, it's more so common on the hands and the skin creases. The biggest thing is infection, right? So making a skin barrier. Um... Could do cultures, otherwise it's basically wear loose cotton clothing, apply, apply moisturizers, bathe every day, um, not hot water, and they could use diluted bleach baths, um, prevent scratching, so antihistamines, keep the, the fingernails short, apply topical steroids, immunomodulators, and look for signs and symptoms of infection, redness, swelling, pustules, purulent drainage. Complementary therapy might include vitamin A, vitamin E, zinc, omega-3 fatty oils, um, and evening prim primrose oil. I've been shown to help. All right, acne common in older children and adolescents, obviously, um, can, provide, uh, can result in long-term scarring and social distress. Manageable condition with multiple treatments available, so go to be seen. It's a bacteria, so most of the time we think about, are they washing? Acne usually starts on the face, but also can appear on the chest and the back. So being alert to that. Make sure that they take off their shirt while you're also doing that. Avoid touching the face, squeezing, pimples. Oil-based creams, cosmetics. Teach adolescents to read labels. Makeup should be oil-free. So you can use like a mild soap cleanser like Cetaphil, Neutrogena. Harsh soaps and astringents damage the skin. Keep the hair off the face. And then things like um, anti-inflammatory, topical antibiotics could be benzoyl peroxide, erythromycin, clindamycin ointments, or oral antibiotics, 
doxycycline. So if I had like a once a day doxycycline. Um, some of these creams can also cause skin sensitivity, so just be careful with that. Going out in the sun, they will need to wear skin protection. Melanomas, so skin cancer, right? Older adolescents, those who have been in UV light um, for sun exposure or sun lamps. So again, talking to them about protective clothing, sunscreen, indoor tanning devices, and to reduce outdoor activities during the, uh, the period of 10 to 2, right? 10 to 2 is the harshest sun. So consider A, B, C, D, E, rule of asymmetry, irregular border, variegated colors, six millimeter diameter, and evolution that does not always apply. Lesions in pediatric patients before puberty can be red, thick, raised, nodular. They have a different pathology than adult lesions. Usually it could be like a nevi or a lesion. It's usually sun damage. Um, and then just knowing um, how to avoid that. So bacterial infections like empatigo, we talked about that. So how do they love to ask this on a test? Papules that turn into vesicles that crust over with a honey crusted, honey colored crust. So honey crusted lesions is typical on the test. Lesions around the mouth and nose can be mistaken for cigarette burns. Um, infection could be in areas where the skin has been damaged or area around the nose that's been irritated by nasal secretions. It's contagious until the, the child has been on antibiotics for 24 hours. And this is group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, streptococcus aureus. So careful hand hygiene, contact isolation, topical antibiotics, oral antibiotics if it's really bad, and then caregiver education, hand hygiene, fingernails trimmed disinfect surfaces wash the child's clothes um, cover it in loose loose cotton clothing topical oral antibiotics complete all antibiotics if the infection worsens seek medical care mrsa just like in adults um, become resistant to usual antibiotics. So easily spread patient to patient. Sometimes begins like a small red bump and can be mistaken by, um, for an insect bite. Could be a small break in the skin. It's a red macule that progresses to a swollen reddened area, tender to the touch. Could be a boil, an abscess cellulitis so culture the area sensitivity tests and then antibiotics incision and draining could be needed and cellulitis just like in adults um, cellulitis is where there's been a small break it could also follow sinusitis and otitis media that's usually mrsa staph aureus h flu those kind of things. Um, warmth, swelling, tenderness, red streaking in the area, and the manifestations are usual fever, chills, malaise. CBC, WBC, bacterial infection, blood cultures, culture insensitivity, warm, wet compresses, Acetaminophen, ibuprofen for the pain and the fever, oral fluids, IV antibiotics, and provide quiet play. Assess CMS checks, color motion sensitivity, and then just refer to home and care instructions for MRSA. 
viral infections oh we got a question real quick purple or blue lesions that do not blanch we talked about this purpura thrombocytopenia petechiae all right so the viral infections so consider warts um, herpes cold sore fever blisters so we talked a little bit about this in class it's usually caused by HPV, plantar warts on the soles of the feet or the palms of the hand, and typically appear on the hands as rough, scaly papules. Warts are mildly contagious in hygiene. Don't pick or, uh, pick or scratch at them because it can lead to bacterial infection and scarring. Don't share towels. Warts heal spontaneously and disappear without treatment within two to three years. Could use liquid nitrogen, cryosurgery, salicylic acid in liquid gel or patch, which was um, compound W. Kids that constantly bite fingernails or pick at cuticles are at higher risk of development of warts under the nails. And then your fever blisters, again, extremely contagious for at least a week, sometimes longer. Most contagious three to four days after recent infection. Viral shedding could continue until after the lesions have cleared. Transmission is usually direct contact or contact with toys that have been put in the mouth. Fever, irritability, enlarged lymph nodes. So contact isolation hand hygiene, acyclovir, don't share cups, utensils, sanitize toys, avoid touching sores, use lip balm with sun blocking agents, over the counter cream, mouthwash with one teaspoon of Benadryl or one half teaspoon of sodium bicarb, might be soothing, a swish and spit. And then the fungal infection, so fungal, so corpus, capitus, head, pedis, feet, personal items, pets, ringworm on the body, ringworm on the scalp, athlete's foot, and jock itch. Scaling packages in the folds of the groin, upper thigh. Itching can be intense. So again, sometimes we'll use um, a lamp to, wood's lamp, because it fluoresces and shows it as green. So we used to use a lamp. Potassium hydroxide, this, this lesions are scraped. Antifungal cream, if the lesions are moist, put them out in the sun. Air the feet as much as possible, sandals, change socks daily, alternate the shoes to give them a chance to air out. On the scalp, um, selenium sulfide or other um, shampoos could be used. And then things associated with bugs, head lice, scabies, insect bites, and Lyme disease. So head lice, again, nits or lice eggs appear as small white translucent yellow dots that are firmly attached to the hair shaft. Nits hatch in seven to ten days. An adult louse is like the size of a sesame seed. Lice feed on blood from the scalp, can't live more than 48 hours away from the scalp. So that's why you put things in a plastic bag that you can't wash. They don't fly or hop, they crawl. Direct contact between people, sharing hats, combs, brushes, 
towels, and bedding. Examine hair under a light, magnifying glass, loose knit comb. Divide the hair into sections, and they're usually found within one fourth inch of the base of the hair shaft. So, leave medication on the hair for 10 minutes, then rinse off. Repeat the treatment in 7 to 10 days, because the new eggs will be coming out. Soak combs and brushes in hot water. Wash clothing and bedding in hot, soapy water. Dry on the hot cycle. Vacuum floor mattresses, stuffed furniture. Toys, personal objects can be tied in a plastic bag for two weeks. Examine the scalp of all close contacts and family members. Don't spray the floor or other surfaces with pesticides. Application of mayonnaise, olive oil, or petroleum jelly has been recommended. So they would have the oil-based product on, cover with a shower cap, and shampoo the next morning. Essential oils have been explored to treat head lice. Hot air with removal of existing nits. So treatments are not been proven successful. There is a contraindication to the particular side shampoos um, contraindicated in children with ragweed allergies. Exacerbation of asthma could occur. And then your mite infestation here um, is going to be burrowed under the skin, leaving lines, tracks, macules, vesicles, pustules, severe itching, especially at night. So it can be in the neck and head area, palms, soles of the feet, mostly in the skin fold, fingers, toes, wrists, elbows, armpits, thighs, buttocks, abdomen. Just wash clothing, bedding, tie items that can't be laundered in a plastic bag for more than five days. Um, shampoo. Is a lotion and then again with stings um, local presentation of stings redness swelling um, so nursing interventions for anaphylactics with bug bites um, administer epinephrine repeat the dose every 15 to 20 minutes maximum dose is 0 0.5 oxygen IV fluids albuterol nebulizer Corticosteroid Benadryl. If they are known to be allergic, they should have an EpiPen at all times. Oral antihistamine, if they're alert and able to swallow. Wash the wound. Do not squeeze the stinger. If a spider bite is confirmed, check on the tetanus shot. A baking soda paste could be used on the sting site. Lyme disease, so that's a deer tick. Signs and symptoms may occur three to 32 days after the tick bite. Again, the usual rash looks like a um, bullseye. So we would do diagnostic testing, including erythrocyte sedimentation rate, WBC, IgM, IgG, Western block test. So when walking outdoors in tall grass and bushes, wear light clothing, long sleeves, long pants, closed-toed shoes, and tuck your pants legs into your socks. Use deep and again, don't squeeze the tick's head, taking it off. Citronella or lavender oils may be used to prevent tick bites in children less than two, but the effectiveness is unknown.
Use tweezers to remove the tick gently from the skin. Don't squeeze or handle the tick. Use gloves or tissues if gloves are not available. Um, if the part of the tick remains, soak this, the skin and soften it until the splinter, you treat it like a splinter until it's removed. Deet spray. And then other injuries, lacerations, bites, sunburns, major and minor burns. Again, in your book, lacerations, stop the bleeding, sterile gauze, wound closure tape, sterile dressing, bacitracin might be used, animal bites, again, tetanus shot. Cat bites are the most common, could transmit bacteria and provide infectious sunburns. UV rays. Think about redness, tenderness. So blistering is second degree burn. Less than six months shouldn't be exposed to direct sunlight. Infants older than six should not be exposed between 10 and four. When children do play outdoors, indirect sunlight is recommended. Wearing broad brimmed hats, shirts, clothing that contains SPF. When the child is going outside SPF 30 or higher, 30 minutes before they're exposed to sun and every hour while outdoors. Apply sunscreen all over. Water resistant sunscreen if they're playing in water. Cool baths, cool compresses, dehydration, provide extra fluids, skin moisturizers, acetaminophen or ibuprofen for pain. Minor or major burns, um, just like the apple idea. Superficial burns are going to be red, painful, no blistering. Deep partial thickness burns, dry, white. Blood blisters, scalding, less pain, can feel pressure applied, electrical burns might be very deep, and also trigger cardiac dysrhythmias up to 72 hours after the burn. ABGs, carby hemoglobin levels for carbon monoxide poisoning. EKG, cardiac monitoring, wound cultures. You might also grab some CBC, BMP, phosphorus, magnesium, albumin, myoglobin, zinc, proton, and pro pressure proton. Oxygen, airway edema, anything looks like singed, just consider an airway. So emergency care, monitor temperature, tetanus shot, emotional support. Avoid the use of ice on burned skin. Keep the head of the bed elevated. Look for dyspnea, wheezing, strider, tachycardia. Sterile technique for dressings, um, SDS cream, the sulfasilvanine cream. Insert feeding tube and give feeding tubes if cannot be fed orally. Chronic home care, um, going to need to have all of your physical therapy, social work, nutrition, occupational therapy, spiritual beliefs, everything in there. Skin grafting could be required. Manual debridement, pool pool debridement, or eschgarotomy. The issue is scar contractures. And then you're just looking for re-epitheliization. 
cooling, pain management, cleaning, debridement, chemoprophylaxis if needed, and dressings. Aloe vera, honey, sugar paste, papaya have all been um, effective topical treatments, but not readily available or as adjunct therapy. Commercial aloe vera products, not live plants. Bernade, tree tea oil. The rule of nines, remember the rule of nines. Um, hospitalization for burns, more than 10% of the um, surface area is burned. For full thickness burns, it's 2%. Remember, smoke inhalation and carbon monoxide poisoning is under this category as well. So make sure that you look at the um, kids' rule of nines prior to the test. Risk for burns, open fires for cooking, loose fitting clothes while cooking, using kerosene, flammable building materials, so kids sometimes are in culturally in a bad situation for burns as well. Stay away from matches. Um, with skin grafts, just look at that real quick because um, autographs are the child's own skin, donor skin. Synthetic products like tilapia. So when we have impaired skin integrity, the biggest thing is infection. Graft versus host disease as well. So that's just a quick overview. Approximate weight for the use of an EpiPen. We talked about this over 30 kilograms and an EpiPen Junior for under 30 kilograms. So in summary, we talked about dermatologic issues. This video, make sure that you find out the um, rule of nines for kids. Kind of know that. They love to ask that.